And we're just going to dive right in. Uh, so in this video, what we're going to do is we are going to get the end game condition. So when the player misses the tick, so when the tick goes by there. Um, the other thing is that the the uh, the rotation of the ball should be relative to the player's tick, so they shouldn't have that far to go. But we should also give them like a little gap. Um, maybe that gap would change the, the further into the game they get. Uh, I'm going to fix the positioning bug with that shackle, so when the shackle moves down and then it just stays there, uh, that should actually move back up to zero, and I don't know why that's not doing that. Um, and then if we have time, we're going to look at storing the player's progress, and then also uh, quit the game when they back out, so when you are um, playing with a phone, I'm trying to show you on this, um, you'll see that you have a little... Oh, Actually, there's a little button there, that little back button that just disappeared there. Um, so that's what we're going to uh, do. So that is today's video, and I'm going to put this over here so that I remember what we're going to do. So I may have to look over there just occasionally just to see what we're going to do. So this is the game that we have so far, just in case you uh, haven't been uh, playing along. Uh, so you tap, first of all, to play. And then it starts, and then you tap that, and it unlocks the shackle, and then you see that it disappears down there, and then uh, we have to tap to play again. Um, I'm not sure if that's in the original game, but as soon as you unshackle it, it, it as soon as you get that, the, the lock unshackles. Actually, I think there is a pause. Oh, I missed it. See, that's where we've got to stop is, the, is that, that problem there. So uh, let's go and do that. So when you miss... Uh, this whole thing here has to shake, so we have, uh, where are we, this lock pivot, which is the main body, so the main body is on an X and Y, so we can do like a kind of random shake along the line there, I think that's probably a good, good place to get started, so uh, I'm going to just double click rotate ball here, I'm wondering if there's, if there's something in maybe maybe there's something that's not set correctly in that uh, that value there or we can just try and hard code it to zero who knows anyway I'm, I'm thinking one one problem ahead just now so the one we're, we're focusing on just now is what happens when you miss um, so where are we there's a lot of stuff in here uh, missed the ball, handle game over. Okay, so our handle game over, we are going to do... Um, so there's unlock finished. And... Um, we're just going to start a... I think we're just going to start a coroutine that's just going to shake the camera and then it's going to go to the, the wait for the next one. So... The next, when we show unlock, unlock finished, okay. So when the unlock is finished, this is what we're going to call here. So um, the current level, uh, we're going to make zero. So we have to make that zero just to make this uh, work in here. Uh, but uh, what we can do is we can do int new level. We can change that in there. And then uh, this one is going to be uh, var new level equals current level plus one. And then we specify new level. Okay, and that specifies that, specifies that. And then that is good. Why is it not like that? I'm not finished. Cannot convert from void to that. Well, that's okay because we can cheat a little bit. So we can do this, and then that works. <laughs> ah, the power of this. Um, so for those of you who are thinking this is uh, some kind of crazy, crazy magic, uh, this is me creating a uh, anonymous function. Uh, that's it, that doesn't take any parameters, and what it does is it calls this function here. So it's kind of cheating because I really want it to call this function, but uh, this function takes a parameter because the show unlock uh, itself, you notice that it takes uh, system action finished, which is no parameters. So it's a little bit of a cheat, 
Um, there's a, I have a video which is up there, I think, up in that corner there. Hopefully, if I remember rightly. In fact, I'll, I'll write it down so that I don't forget it. Uh, action video. At, and then we're, what, six minutes in? Okay. Okay. So if you're not clear on that, there's a video up there for you that sort of explains uh, what I just did there. So that's our new celebration. So at the end there, um, we're going to call um, uh, start coroutine um, shake the lock. Okay. So that's our coroutine for shake the lock. So down here, we're going to have a right, enumerator shake the lock yield, oops, no. And then we're going to say unlock finished. And then the new level is going to be one because you start off at the, the previous level. Actually, I think that the is current level. So you start off at the current level, and of course it doesn't like that because I don't have system collections. And as soon as I add system collections, that will work. So this is just a placeholder just now. We're not, we haven't done anything. We're just going to get it to violently shake. Actually, let's do that just now. Um, okay, so we want this to last for half a second. So I'm going to say float time equals um, zero. While time is less than one, and um, time plus equals time dot delta time divided by 0 0.5. So that's our duration. So I'm going to say const float duration equals 0 0.5. And I'm going to change that down to there. And so rather than having this magic number here, we are actually specifying that it's, it's zero. I'm not going to create a, a constant at the very top there. It doesn't really matter. Um, it's just I want this to move faster, but I still want to keep the same time in there. If that makes any sense. And then, um, so the range of this, the main body is, um, I don't want rotation, I want position on the X. So I want it to go, um, I want it to go kind of 0. Point, what was that, 0. 0.5? 0. 0.525? Yeah, 0. 0.25 is probably good enough. Um, so I want a number between, uh, I want half. So I want to do float new X equals uh, random dot range, um, and then the minimum is um, zero, and the maximum is zero point five, and that's going to be oops minus zero point two five plus whatever that is, and then I'm just going to say um, lock body. I don't have that yet dot transform, actually dot position, that uh, will be local position equals new uh, vector three, and it'll be new x comma zero comma zero. So I haven't got this lock body in yet, but I will have it in just a sec. And then at the very end there, I want to say lock position equals vector three dot zero because I want to return lock body back to the, the position there. And we're all doing this inside the game controller. So now I'm going to have uh, up here, I'm going to say public uh, transform lock body. And that's going to be some kind of lock body. And then it's still got things here. Uh, local position. I don't know why that. Ah, I didn't spell position right. Postian. It's the new form of position. And uh, that's it for shake the locks. It should go like that um, for half a second and then move back to where it should be. Now we do need to uh, move this main body 
uh, into this slot. So we'll do that now before we forget, because I always forget. And I'll drag and drop it in there. So main body is now inside that transform. So when we miss this, so I'm just going to set it off to miss and it should shake. Okay, it did shake. Oh, it's still shaking. Didn't shake there. Um, what have I got? Tons of other stuff in there. Uh, interstitial reset, reset, update UI. I don't have the change direction though. Shake the lock. And then state is equal to that. Mr. the ball. No, um, what did we do? What? Huh? Well, lock hoop reset. Why is that not working for a start? Child dot local position. Uh, that might be it. And then we'll change that to local position. That might be the fix for our what we need for that uh, for the the shackle. I've called it loop previously, but I did some research on the interwebs. Apparently it's called a shackle. Who knew? So hopefully this will fix that. And it did. Okay, that's good. So that fixed that. Uh, the only issue is that um, that should not move. Um, lock pivot, lock hoop. Take pivot reset. Okay, so all of these should reset, but it's not doing that. So I'm guessing there is something in here. Take pivot rotate false. There we go. So um, shake the lock. And so shake the lock is going to have to do this here. So we're going to stop the tick pivot there. And then. Do celebration. So we don't want to do celebration. But we do want to set that to be false. There. So we want to turn that off there. Uh, and I'm sure there's 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 better ways of doing this rather than copying and pasting code. But um, uh, this is the the things that you could so. When, I'm, when I write these, when I do these videos, uh, I do them off the top of my head, okay? I don't, maybe I should go back and revisit things. Um, and that's maybe my fault that I'm, I don't explain this very well. Um, but I, I do this as a first pass. So all of, all of my code that I write is a first pass. This is a sort of, it'll get you to where you need to go. And then to fix it, you then need to spend a little bit more time to do it. It's the exact same thing that Unity's got. It gets you to 80%, but it's that last 20% that you need to actually put the effort into. So that's what my videos do. They get you to 80% and then you got to like, you know, tweak it a little bit for your particular needs. So maybe I, I, I don't explain it. Maybe that wasn't a great explanation either, but that's my idea is to get you into game development and, and to have fun uh, with game development. It's not there uh, to say, uh, well, occasionally it is. Maybe I should come with a warning with some of the videos that says, this is how you should do it. Uh, and other videos of, we're just having fun here. I don't know. You should always have fun, no matter what you're doing, whether it's all very serious. Uh, anyway, ran over. Okay, so we compile this, and we run, and so we tap, we miss, and it does that. Uh, see, that's not resetting. And now we're getting weird things happening. 
Okay, so um, Mr. Ball, if it's in the interstitial state, return. So we need to figure out if you've entered. I think that was the problem was um, uh, where's the game state? Game state is playing interstitial. Okay, so we need to find out where where the ball leaves. Uh, so that's the ball. That's the ball part. Then the trigger. Is it tick trigger? Uh, inside ball and then exiting ball. So if tick exit. Okay. So tick exit. That's the one we're looking for, which is handled by. Uh, who's using this? Uh, tick exit not equal to that. Tick exit equals missed the ball. Okay, and missed the ball is missed the ball, and this is used by missed the ball equals missed the ball. Uh, inside the game control. Okay, so that's missed the ball. Okay. Um, So let's go back to tick trigger reset. So we need to reset tick trigger as well. So does that happen? Tick trigger reset. No, that does not happen. Oh, no, it does happen. Tick trigger reset is rotate trick. So does that have to happen there? Yeah, I'm a bit confused as to why. That should be ticking there. Okay, so I'm going to say um, what I want to do here. Um, state is exiting ball. Okay, maybe. Um, I just wanted to figure out what's happening here. So it, it looks like it's being that that trigger is being triggered because we leave there, but also the reset isn't working. Let's see if we can get the reset to work. So when I um, do it correctly, so if I play the game and then I. Oh, it does start from there. Um. Your trick. So maybe hmm. maybe the issue is that it's it's rotating. Should it rotate from there? I guess it should rotate from there because we want it to go from that position. So we do that. So. Okay, that's the good question is why is that getting called? So let's go back to our game controller and the game state is interstitial. Okay, so why is that? Why the biggest question is why is that getting called when we win the game? So when we win that round, or we don't win the game, we never win the game because it just keeps going on. Um, so when we win the round, why is that getting fired? Uh, uh, didn't. There you go. My machine is really slow today. Okay. All right. It's so slow we're not even actually showing a ball there. What? Where's the ball gone now? There we go. Okay, so I'm in missed the ball because that has gone into here and because it's left the ball and I'm in here and the game state is playing. Okay. So, 
this is inside here. So the problem is it, this needs to get set here before this gets called. Because as this gets set to be active, everything else trickles down. So this is more copy and paste code. I don't like this. Um, and then down here we need to do the same thing. So we've got to make sure it's in inside the interstitial screen. Ugh. We've got to have like a... Uh, again, I'll leave this up to you, but I, uh, I think that there's common elements here that we need to take out. Um, but uh, I think this is why it's, it's failing for this one. So let's fix this. So we go down here and then we... No, still doing it. No, and that's going the wrong way as well. Because um, it's got to be that way around. Do celebration. And then this way has got to be around that way. Uh, so that it doesn't trigger it. Because the problem is that we need to know... Uh, I'm probably overcomplicating this, especially with like multiple flags. It's best not to have multiple flags to, that do the same thing. Okay, that's better. And then round here. Now. Nope. Okay, that's because... I don't know why, because you need to do the same thing for uh, this other part here, which is start fade out, ball fade out. So this has got the this item in here. So if taps left is equal to that, then we need to do the ball fade out. So ball fade out is going to do this. So we need to tell it we're doing the interstitial screen. And then... Um, once we show the tick, all fade in out time. So we do the show tick. We then uh, turn that into playing. So we've got to basically turn off collision detection in between it all. This is not the, the greatest way to do this. We should really have more of a state machine than, than this. <sighs> but we are where we are. So, yeah, the issue is that we need to turn off uh, inside ball fade out. We need to tell it that we're not playing the game while we do this. And then we reset everything. And then once we've reset everything, we then say we're playing the game again. So although all this stuff is going to happen in a nanosecond, we're not playing the game for a nanosecond. Um, Maybe not a nanosecond, but a short period of time anyway. All right. So let's tap this. And so one, we unlock. And then two, we should do boom. No. Nope. No. Nope. I mean, I like the shake. I mean, the shake's working. And it is going back to the current level. So it is kind of working, but not the way I want it to work. Okay. Um, let's find out where this is getting called then. But I can't do it until we get uh, multiple ones. So uh, our current level is going to be uh, 5. Uh, because I need to know when this is being called. So, let's uh, get a little drink here. Drink, you boys. All right. And so, uh, let's do this. So, the first one it won't. <laughs> okay. So this is Mr. Ball. And that was 
was on exit. So, um, the current state is playing. Why is the current state playing? So if it's inside the ball, does it get inside the ball? It does. So maybe I need to put it inside here. The ball pivots start fade out. So instead of there, um, ball faded out. So maybe I put it inside here. Uh, but I don't see why that, that would make a difference because all the code is really in here. Um, I think the problem is that the ball pivot changes. Tick pivot reset. Okay, but the tick pivot reset happens. Yeah, we don't we want it to keep rotating though. Let it compile and okay. And then that's it. All right, we're still we're still we're still doing weird things here, so Let's see if it works for one. So it shouldn't shake when you when you finish. Maybe we're gonna have to pull the interstitial all the way back up to there, which is a bit of a pain. Yeah, see it works for that. Works for two. And yeah, it seems to be working. Well, yeah, I mean, you're going to fail if you go straight on top of there. Uh, hopefully we can figure that one out. Okay. So what happens when you miss? I think we've, we've done that. Uh, fix that positioning with a shackle. We've done that. So rotate the ball should be relative to player's tick. And this one could be a little bit trickier. Um, and... Uh, Um, rotate to the player's tick. Um, okay. So, our rotate ball script has got this. Where are we? Okay, so it's an Euler angle. So, we just need to feed in the current angle of the tick, which we probably don't have. No airlock. Uh, rotate angle speed is that. And rotate is that. So we could probably get, um, let's see if we've got uh, console.rightline transform. Dot rotation dot Euler angles dot and then it'll be Z I think because uh, it's the rotation around Z are we X and Y is that X and Y I can't remember um, come on click on something you know you want to uh, yeah so it should be rotation around Z so let's see what that gives us We'll do a console. Uh, gives us nothing. Why is that? What? Oh, that's why. 
<clears throat> Everything's fine. Idiot. I forgot I've got my, my dumbbell. Get it? When I make a dumb mistake, I go. And it draws attention to my faux pas. Okay, so I've got console down there. Okay, so we've got uh, one, seven, yeah, that looks good. Okay, so that is our current rotation. So we just need to get that current rotation out. So I'm gonna create a property and that property for my rotate tick is gonna be public float um, Z rotation. And I'm saying get return transform dot rotation dot Euler angles dot Z. Okay, so that is gonna be my current rotation for the, the player's tick. Rotate ball. And the rotate ball is in the range, um, it, should, uh, it should be from 45 to 45, I think. But it's also gonna be um, do fade and then it's going to be um, float player tick rotation. So we're going to pass in the player tick rotation and um, we need to pass that in there as well. Uh, and then that's going to be uh, player tick rotation plus 45 plus that. So it's going to be at least the player rotation plus 45 plus whatever it is times the direction. So it's going to be all of this multiplied by the direction because it could be the opposite direction as well. So don't forget that because um, we flip back and forth. So we need this player tick rotation in here as well. That one there. Player tick rotation and then true, and then we also need that in here. And that. And these are used in the game controller, I think. Yep, here we go. And so this is going to be a tick pivot dot z rotation, and then that's going to be the same all the way down here. And we're going to do that, and we're going to do that, and that should mean that our, rot our rotation is going to be at least 45 degrees away from where we are, and then another 45 degrees on top of that. So it could be up to 90 degrees away from the current player position. So, uh, so that unlocked that. Uh, that went the wrong way. Oh, at least it's um Yeah, it's gotta be the direction. I think the problem is Oh well, it's working anyway. If you miss, then it. Oh, yeah, we haven't done that condition as well. Oh, we need to do that condition. Okay. So we haven't done, we've done the condition where that happens, but we haven't done the condition where uh, if you click prematurely, that happens. Okay, we need to do that. So we've done the rotation relative to the player's tick. I'm okay with that. I can, I can live with that. Oh, um, I need to get rid of that print though. Uh, so that print is inside rotate. So we get rid of that. And we now need to handle if the mouse goes, if the player's mouse goes down, tick trigger. Uh, where are we? That is in game controller. Um, so do celebration on mouse down. Okay. So if it's 
uh, interstitial, we don't do anything else. So if it's inside the ball, we do that. Else, uh, if it's outside the ball, we basically do this routine here, which is shake the lock. So we do that. Um, yeah. And that should fix that problem as well. So let's try that. It's unlocked it. So that says we failed that one. And we did it too early that time. Did it too early that time. Too early. Okay. And we unlocked it. Um, oh yeah, in case you're wondering what that, it's the, the um, that line there is just the gizmos, just turn it off and it'll go away. All right. Okay, I think, um, I think I'm going to call it quits for this, uh, this video here. Um, I think we're uh, we're good to go, so I'll uh, I'll put it in the full screen webcam. So thank you uh, very much for watching this one. Um, I was going to get to the store players progress, but um, I'm actually going to uh, leave that to the next video. Um, but yeah, so we've, we what do we do? We uh, we we fix the, the the miss condition. So when the tick goes beyond the ball, or if you tap the the mouse before, then uh, that that fails. Um, the rotation of the ball should be relative to the player's tick. That's kind of working. Uh, we might have to revisit that before we, we ship it. And uh, fix the positioning bug with the shackle. We fixed that. So it was all to do with local position rather than the actual position. Um, so that was a, that was a good win. Um, so next video, we're going to do the store player's progress and the quit game when the, the, they back out with the confirmation dialogue. So I need to create some... Some graphics for that so rather than me polluting this video with uh, me creating crappy graphics uh, i will leave it until next time and uh, i'll say thank you very much for watching uh, your viewership is appreciated and i will catch you in the next video and uh, if you like this video uh, and you haven't subscribed already then uh, click the the subscribe button and don't forget to do the, not the notification icon and then click the okay button and all that kind of stuff uh, if you liked it thumbs up if you didn't like it thumbs down and um, yeah, thank you again for watching and I'll, I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.